Hey everyone and welcome back to Today I Effed Up, the subreddit where people tell stories of hilarious ways that they screwed over their own lives. Today's post, Today I Effed Up by Ignoring My Resting Heart Rate of 140 Beats Per Minute. I am 26, male. This incident occurred in July of this year and resulted in me being hospitalized for three days. Background. In mid-June, I started a new job for the civil service in the UK after giving up on a teacher training course a few weeks prior to being offered the job. However, the warning signs for what was about to happen started whilst I was doing my teacher training from August to September 2018 onwards. Shortly after starting my teacher training, I became acutely aware that my heart was beating faster and harder than usual, even when I was completely sedentary or relaxed. This was particularly noticeable at night when I was trying to sleep, as I'd often be preoccupied with thinking about how fast it was beating, and this would lead to me being unable to fall asleep. Around this time, it was holding steady at about 100 beats per minute. I'd frequently measure it just out of curiosity, but then I'd forget about it for a few days until I was having one of those nights where I was struggling to sleep. I'd generally notice my heart rate, but only be slightly baffled at how fast it was beating. I didn't think anything of it, and put it down to just being generally unfit. For reference, I play football once a week and typically walk for about 40 minutes a day, so although I wasn't doing an ideal amount of exercise, I thought my level of exercise was adequate. I put my fast heart rate down to my lifestyle, the fact that I don't eat particularly healthily, and I also smoke and drink every other weekend. Fast forward a few months and the sleepless nights had really started to take its toll. I had missed 20 days of teacher training through sickness absence and was on the verge of being thrown off the course. This is around March or April 2019 and I still hadn't taken any measures to investigate my fast heart rate. In fact, by this point it had become a running joke in my friend group to ask, how's the resting heart? Or, my heart rate while sprinting is essentially your resting heart rate, etc. Being quite a self-deprecating person, I was quite happy to go along with the joking. Although internally, I was now really starting to worry. In May 2019, I got offered a job I had applied for 12 months prior. I was on a waiting list. I took the opportunity to get the F out of teacher training, which I despised, and took the job at the civil service. This is when things really started to become concerning. About four weeks into my new job, I started to feel nauseous on most days. I had also recently purchased a set of scales and noticed that over 12 months I had dropped from 11 stone 5 pounds to 8 stone 11 pounds without any change in lifestyle. By now, my resting heart rate was 120 to 140 beats per minute at rest, no matter what. On maybe two or three days every week while walking to work, I'd find myself feeling incredibly sick and sometimes I would stop off to be sick before heading into the office or being sick in the toilets at work. Eventually, I had a few days sickness absence off work and took the opportunity to visit my GP. I had actually gone to see the GP, the doctor, because of a bout of insomnia, not about my heart, but he measured my heart rate and blood pressure, just a standard procedure. My GP, visibly in shock, asks me how long my heart rate had been so high at rest. I said, oh, about a year, but I'm very unfit, you see. He immediately suggests I can either book to come back next week for a heart scan or go straight to A&E and have a heart scan there and he will call ahead. I followed my usual lifelong rule of no news is good news and said I'll have the scan next week, at which point he insisted I go to A&E right now. I take his advice. I arrive at A&E and explain that my GP should have rang ahead. He hadn't. So I went to sit down, fully prepared to wait three or four hours to be seen by anyone. To my amazement, before I had even sat down, a nurse called me through to the triage area where she hooked me up to a heart monitor. My heart rate was now at 180 beats per minute. I get sent to resus and given an IV with a solution intended to reduce my heart rate. It did nothing. At this point, I was told that I wouldn't be able to leave the hospital until they had worked out what the problem was, so a nurse took my blood and the tests were carried out. By this point, it was around 9 p.m., so I was moved onto a ward, hooked back up to an IV, and by 11 p.m., I was asleep. 
In the morning, a doctor approached me and interviewed me. One question that resonated with me was, do you have any difficulty swallowing? Up until that point, it hadn't ever crossed my mind that yes, I do have difficulty swallowing. What the frick? After concluding his questioning and looking at my blood tests, he explained that I had hyperthyroidism and that the level of thyroxin in my body was over 1,000 times the normal level, meaning my metabolism was in overdrive in my heart too. The enlarged thyroid gland itself was the cause behind the difficulty swallowing. They keep me in for another night, and eventually my heart dips below 100 beats per minute for the first time in months. I get prescribed a cocktail of medication which I have to take for the foreseeable future, carbimazole and propanolol for those interested, and then they let me go home. I look up the symptoms for an overactive thyroid, and I tick pretty much all of them and think, you complete and utter moron, how could I have missed this? Why did I leave it so long before going to a GP? You coward, etc, etc. It was at this point my mom decided to tell me, oh yeah, that makes sense, it runs in the family, we all have it. Cheers for the heads up, mom. The present day. As I write this, I'm back up to 11 stone 7 pounds, which is about 163 pounds for you in America, and my heart is steady at 50 to 7 beats per minute. I'm reducing my medication steadily and gradually. I forgot what it actually feels like to feel well. Edit. For those curious as to why I didn't visit my GP sooner, the 20 days of sickness I had during my teacher training weren't all in one go. They were two to three days here and there over the course of six months or so. I had, in fact, visited the doctors during these absences more than once. I had also mentioned my heart rate, but at the time I was told simply to keep an eye on it because I was ignorant of the other symptoms, I didn't mention them, meaning it would have been incredibly difficult for them to diagnose what was wrong. My doctor's lack of concern, based on my incomplete information, was reassuring and my internal monologue convinced me he's the expert, he isn't worried, and who am I to question him? So in subsequent visit I would only mention it briefly. Flawed logic, of course. Extra detail, when I refer to my GP, it can be any number of doctors unless you request the same person specifically, which I never did. The doctor who eventually sent me to A&E was fairly new to the practice, and after reading through all my notes, after taking my blood pressure and heart rate, and after me saying it had been about a year, decided the trend had gone on too long. So glad you caught it in time. My girlfriend had hyperthyroidism for about six to eight months before she found out. I kept telling her I thought something was wrong. She was always tired, hungry, irritable, and very weak. Every week to every month I would argue with her to go to the doctor, to which she never did. The breaking point for me was when she squatted all the way down and was too weak to stand back up without assistance. She still made excuses for it, but I put my foot down that day. Glad to hear you got the help you needed. For anyone who has a friend, girlfriend, or boyfriend whom you believe needs to see a doctor, just go the extra mile and say, let's go, we're going to see the doctor. For some weird reason when we're sick, lots of us refuse to see the doctor, besides money, even when it's covered. I've been there and after the fact, it's like, why are you like this? So I had a girlfriend who would avoid the doctor. Same as me, but once I caught onto this issue, I'd ask a couple of times if she wanted to. She kept saying no, okay, that's it. We're going anyway. After the visit, she would thank me, I just brought her. Not to go is some dumb brain logic we can't shake off easily. So that's it for the post, guys. Wow, I think this is really relatable for a lot of people. I really enjoyed the final commenter there. I definitely feel the strain myself to where I don't want to get medical treatment for some reason, even when I need to. There's some kind of, like, <sighs> off-kilter evolutionary instinct in me that wants to just fight off the problems or doesn't want to ask for help. Maybe it's societally, you know, developed, or maybe it's some weird... Um, caveman instinct that's misfiring, I don't know. But uh, it's definitely how I was raised. My mother would always be very stubborn to take any kind of medication or go to see the doctor, and I think it just sort of was instilled in me throughout life. Um, but I try to fight against it. You know, medical professionals are here to help us, and there are times when uh, it literally could mean the difference between uh, life and death or between, like, 
cutting off a serious medical problem at the pass or letting it get out of control. So I hope you guys will seek medical help when you need to. I hope you enjoyed the post. It was really entertaining. I like the, um, the story. And we hope you did too. As always, if you did like the post, please leave a like or a comment. It always helps us out a lot. And if you'd like to hear more and see more posts from r slash TIFU and other subreddits in the future, please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and for listening.